Do not be eager in your heart to be angry, for anger resides in the bosoms of fools. Ecclesiastes 7.9 I got up this morning, started my devotional, already had the word playing over me. Um, reading through it, I, I just became kind of distracted. Um, and then when I get distracted, I'll pick up my phone, I'll look at something, I end up, I end up opening up one of today's emails for the news, the headlines that I have to get ready for for work. One frustrating headline after another. Then my cats come out, makes me really miss my dog, because he would just wake up in the morning and wag his tail and come over. Um, but the cats, they constantly start meowing, like they want something. So I, I finally get up, and then I see, because they're meowing, circling the food, but I get up and I see they have food, they have water. What are you meowing about? I clean the litter box, still meowing. I just This anger starts building up, and it's so frustrating. And uh, it just, it steals the peace. So I get back in the Word. I, I, I read a few chapters in Corinthians, and, and I'm still just having this anxiousness. I had an idea of what I was going to talk about today, but I'm like, no, let me just talk about anger. Let me read scripts on anger. Because it can just, I know when I was in the world, before I had a relationship with Christ, even though I grew up a Christian, I never had a relationship. I never understood what it was. I saw the hypocrisy, the judgmental nature of it, and I didn't really accept it, even though I heard the words. Now I understand the brokenness and the sin and why you can see people being angry all the time, contradicting their own words and what they see and hear at church. And, and it just kind of turns you away as a kid, but then you realize that we all are still broken and anger is a very real force of nature it's a spirit and people can be overtaken by the spirit of anger but when you're aware of it you can come back you can fight back and attempt to exercise self-control now i'm just going to read some scriptures on it proverbs 15 1 and this is one of the the best ones especially when you're dealing with somebody who's angry a gentle answer turns away wrath but a harsh word stirs up anger you can't fight fire with fire and that's why love is a spirit behind words spoken. So truth and love have to be married. You can't speak truth in anger. It'll be rejected and only bring on more anger. But if you speak truth in love, people may reject it and they may react harshly, but it will still plant the required seed that could take fruit at some point. Uh, Proverbs 14:29. he who is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who is quick tempered exalts folly. Exactly. I feel like a fool when I'm angry. When I'm angry, I'm like, I know these cats don't know any better, but it, it, like, I'm like, like, I just feel like they're ungrateful as if they know any better. Anyway, I digress. Psalm 37, 8, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only leads to evil doing. When we stew on the anger, it leads us into sin. It leads us into evil doing. That's why we have to cease. Just like love is, a, is an action, it's not like some feeling that we just like stay in. Love is a choice that we make. We choose to love somebody because we, we're, we're called to love people that don't love us back. That is a choice that we make in submission to God. Anger is the same way. We can choose to stay in anger or we can choose to reject it. And go the way of grace and forgiveness. And that includes ourselves. I gotta forgive myself off I gotta forgive myself often. Uh, Ephesians four, twenty six, twenty seven, again, be angry yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not give the devil an opportunity. The longer you stay in anger, the longer you allow a conflict to brew without coming to a reconciliation. We're to be reconcilers and peacemakers, not dividers. Um we give the enemy a chance to get in there. We get other people a chance to come in and gossip and make the gap longer. And then pride sets in the longer you stew on anger. And this used to be a problem for me when I was younger. Not that, not that I don't struggle with it now. I'm talking about it. But, you know, I grew up around that type of stuff, too. And so we all have different forces that are kind of putting us in this place. But we've got to be aware of anger and take control of it. And the easiest way to do that, pray, get in the word. Focus on God's word, which is what I'm doing right now. 
James 1, 19 to 20, This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. When we are angry, we are not representing God properly. Cannot be angry and a reflection of God's love. You just can't. It's simple. We need to repeat it sometimes. Colossians 3, 8. But now you also put them all aside, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive speech from your mouth. Put it all aside. Focus on the Lord. Focus on His love and peace. This world wants us to be angry. I didn't even get into any of the stories that just like are so frustrating because it's more the same. Anyway, that's it. Don't let the sun go down in your anger. Do not allow anger to stew. If you feel it, you know, be still and know that I am God. Seek Him. Um, he forgives us. We got to forgive ourselves and we got to forgive those who get angry with us too. That is how we can be the best reflection of God's love and not stay in anger. This world wants to make us angry. Don't let it. God died for you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. See you tomorrow.